Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the exciting installment number six of learning to program PLCs with structured text. Uh, I have covered basic structured text, operators, timers, rtrigs. We made a little pizza oven mock-up uh, in the previous video. So if you haven't seen those, check them out. But we're going to get started. This episode is going to be about visualizations which at the moment is just a really good engineering tool, something to help you get at your data, take a look at things, and sort of uh, make like a mini HMI within your code. So uh, it's a really nice feature, and I want to cover it just because it's going to make some of the next tutorials a little bit easier to work with. So basically what you do, I got my program open here. Uh, you come over to Visualizations here, Add, and Visualization. Remember, you can put anything in any folder in this version, so... Um, what we want is a visualization, I'll leave it called whatever it was called, default. Um, so we get a blank file here. Actually, I'm going to make myself small now. Um, so this is just a blank uh, canvas for us to work on. And we'll need to drop some items or some elements on here. So it took me sadly a little while to find this actually. It's in the toolbox where it is in Visual Studio normally. Um, but you may have to open that with View Toolbox. Uh, just to get a hold of these in the default install. So uh, let's start by making our pizza oven here that we've been working with in the past tutorials. So I'm just going to draw a little bit here. Um, let me run through a few of these things. You've got um, you know, just some, some kind of pre-made switches and lamps. I don't really care for them. They're always super ugly. Um, measurement controls. These are usually pretty bad as well. Um, I don't tend to use them very often. Histogram's nice though if you need it. Um, basic stuff, which is what I use mostly to draw little pictures and um, you know, mock-ups of what the machine looks like. Um, and the number one thing you use is just a rectangle, and then there's also a button here as well. So um, I'll go ahead and throw some of these elements out here. Copy, paste another one here. So here's our pizza oven. Come back. Um, let me pin this guy. So I will grab, I've got my two buttons, I need a window, what have I made here? Uh, sometimes some flaky stuff happens like that. Anyway, we'll not worry about that, it'll go away. So, I'll grab my window here. Uh, this point in the middle is, the, the I think it's the point of rotation. So if you're going to animate this stuff, that's important, but since we're not, it's not important at all. So I will make a pizza here, just a mock-up little pizza. And over on properties, you have some stuff like the color and stuff like that. So I'm just going to make this guy uh, color red. Boom, good. Um, so that color is not going to change or anything. It's just going to be red for now. So our buttons, I can name them. So um, insert pizza here. And this one is going to be uh, take pizza out. Um, so the code behind these buttons, we now need to tell it what to do, what tag. So in this properties uh, section here for the button, it's kind of hidden under here. It's an input configuration. You can, all these events are, are usable. You can do a tap if you want to tap a variable on or off, um, which is, is sort of like a momentary switch. Um, you can do uh, a toggle, which just toggles the variable, or you can set up hotkeys in here if you want. But what we want is when you click on it. So when the user clicks this button, um, we want to just turn the pizza bit on that says we have a pizza. So we're still simulating our inputs here. There's no hardware or anything. It's all, all made up stuff. So what I want to do, um, normally there's like an on bit. Uh, command, but I can't find it. I don't know, but this will work fine. Execute structured text. So you can actually do some relatively complicated code in here, which is pretty nice. Um, whoops. So be pizza in oven is what I want. It's a Boolean. So I will turn that on to true anytime somebody pushes that button. So um, I'm going to come over to take pizza out and on mouse click, I will add a structured text snippet and main dot pizza in oven equals false okay good to go i'm going to save it just in case i crash kind of get in that habit of control s all the time okay for this pizza we want it to come on and off when there's actually a pizza supposedly in this oven so 
um, that would be under state variables here under invisible so we will tell it we're invisible if be pizza in oven but we don't want to be invisible we want to be visible when there's a pizza in the oven so I'm going to negate this statement with a not ahead of time you can actually uh, you can put a little bit of uh, I think you can do an evaluation in here um, so if this equals this or if this is greater than that but basic stuff you can get away with anything else you'll need to do in the code but anyway uh, so we've got the pizza in the oven is all good to go so I need a display now for the elapsed time that would be nice um, let's do there I think you could do a text box at least in the older stuff but I got in the habit of using rectangles because they just work better so I'm gonna put this rectangle up here and click a text inside of it that says uh, elapsed time and so this the way you do a string on these a string display in here is a little odd you do a placeholder for it so percent s would be the string of this text box you can do a few other ones you can look it up at percent i is one for an integer and stuff like that but i usually just display string so um, over here text variables in the properties you pick the variable that you want in there and i can actually use this dialog but i don't like it um, main dot my timer dot et and so I believe the uh, the actual time function has a way to automatically display as a string so you don't really have to convert it um, and so I, I think that should work we may have to convert it to a string but we'll see see if we like it um, the other things we need here are um, another let's do a uh, ellipse for the buzzer and I'll go ahead and make that some fancy color actually what we can do is uh, the alarm state is red already so somewhere in here color variables toggle color um, whoops I keep doing that main dot uh, be buzzer so anytime the buzzers on it's gonna color this red so that should be good and let's go ahead and add one we won't use it yet but we'll add a light in as well um, and then take this out because I copied it so anyway we've got a pizza we've got a timer we've got inserting a pizza we've got the ability to take out a pizza I'm gonna save it once again and let's test it out and see if I messed anything up so go online or rather activate um, put it in run mode log in and actually run this is the first time I've run since I booted and there's no pizza nothing's going on everything's fine so I can insert a pizza in the oven you see the timer starting to count it's done the buzzers on perfect I can take the pizza out the buzzer goes off the timer automatically resets so just a flashback to the old code this is the code we're running here I did that in episode three four some five maybe somewhere around there um, so anyway uh, that's basically a visualization um, you can get crazy with it you can put in all sorts of cool tab controls and buttons and um, you know actually make it look decent this is not intended to be an end user sort of thing so um, at the moment at the time of this video being made you can't even really launch this on its own so it's it's pretty much just for engineering but I found that if you put some time into these and really make the useful data available it really helps you when you're debugging the machine later so if you have performance metrics or um, just anything that you can toggle some things you sometimes I'll put a step mode in which I'll cover later on um, so step buttons and stuff this is a great place to do this because when you're in there trying to toggle these bits in here oh I want a pizza in the oven let's supply it and you know all this kind of stuff it gets old especially when your stuff's super nested down deep and there's arrays and anyway this is the better way to do it I think it's pretty clear what you get out of it so um, that's about what I wanted to show on this video actually I'll keep this one short and move on to the next one now that we have this done so um, any questions put them in the comments below and uh, as usual the link to the next video will be down there as well and uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video